evening viewers and welcome to another edition of your sporting program here on the Network Scoreboard. I'm your host George Matheson and I'll be here with you for the next hour where we will be discussing tonight we're going to be talking boxing as you know a couple of weeks back the Trinidad and Tobago Amateur Boxing Association took a squad to Guyana for the Caribbean uh, Boxing Championships and uh, from the reports coming back to Trinidad we did pretty well a lot of gold medals and silver and bronze and on today's program we have uh, one of the, the senior coach uh, Floyd Trumpet along with two of the boxers Aaron Hassett and Nigel Paul uh, we're going to be talking to them concerning what went on in the championships and what we can look forward to as the year ends and we look forward to a bumper year in boxing in 2060. Uh, Trump, it's a pleasure. Thank you, Francis. Welcome, sir. Nigel. Mm -hmm. And Aaron Hassett. Um, well, we're, we're going to start with Aaron because um, Aaron is one who, you know, we really say has made a comeback because um, his last time in the ring was in 2010. And he came back to the championships. And he not only won the elite, best elite boxer, he also won best overall boxer so maybe he was he took a couple of years to train and come back a better <laughs> who knows but we're going to talk to him here in one final Aaron um an absent from the ring for all these years coming back into this um major tournament and winning gold in the 69 kg also best elite and also overall um boxer um what was happening to you when we weren't seeing you in, in, in the ring <laughs> Well, um, in 2010, I went to the World Military Boxing Championships and I competed there. I lost. I won the first bout, the first bout and the quarterfinals bout. I lost that bout. I don't know how I lose the bout, but I lose the bout, mm -hmm. and that would have been the bout to get me a medal. Mm -hmm. And but at that time, I was still doing my degree, um, bachelor's degree in exercise science at the University of Trinidad and Tobago. Mm -hmm. And I mean, as an athlete traveling, I need to travel, you miss a lot of school, mm -hmm. so you have to come back and catch up. And I decided to take some time and actually finish my degree. And while I'm doing that, I also, you know, I'm a fitness instructor as well. Yeah, so yeah. I started doing, actually got involved in something called Zumba Fitness. Yeah. And well, boxing was my love at that time, and then I kind of fall in love with Zumba. Mm -hmm. I started paying money in my pocket as well. So, okay. you know, I started doing Zumba and then I just stopped boxing. I say, you know what? It makes no sense I'm going back now and I I literally kept keep myself away from even going to see going to watch boxing because yeah, you know yeah. when you when you go and you sit down and you watch it and you see these guys in the ring and sometimes you realize, okay, boy, this nah boy, you wanna come back because yeah, yeah. you're seeing I mean you're seeing I mean the standard wouldn't be a, well to me when I go the standard is not as high as I would mm -hmm. as I was accustomed to. Yeah. Um so I kept, I keep myself away from boxing, I kept away and I just, to me, fitness wise and work. Well, <clears throat> you're always fit, but um, when did you got called back to join the team to go to Guyana and when did you already start to put the, the training, you know, in, in, into place? <laughs> well, um, within the, between 2010 and now, I went, I came back and I asked Mr. Ford to be the, be the, the trainer for the team. So oh. I was working with the youth team. I did some work with the youth team and so forth. I actually came back last, sometime in October because I went to a Zuma convention and I came back. I went to, I think it was September. I, I went to Mr. Ford and I asked him again to be the trainer for the team. Oh. And he was like, I said, boy, I think you should give this thing one more try. You know, I feel I have what it takes. Mm -hmm. I like, um, it's a fault. I'm really not interested. Mm -hmm. You know, I really wasn't interested. But I know I have what it takes. Mm -hmm. And he said, give it one more try. You know, give it, give this Olympic a try. And if, then if you don't qualify, then, you know, we'll put things in place and to do a coaching course and mm -hmm. so forth. And I said, okay, I'll give it a shot. And I started training, actually boxing training in, when I started training trumpet, October. October. In October, just like a, m a month before the competition. Mm -hmm. I mean, my fitness level was at a certain level because I was, 
I mean, I'm, I'm always fit. I'm yeah, always yeah, exercising, yeah, yeah. teaching Zumba, teaching fitness classes. So, you know, and then working, I mean, we teach, teach PTIs and PTI course in Defense Force. Mm -hmm. um, so my fitness level has always been at a certain standard, but not boxing wise. Mm -hmm. So it, it was a little challenge for me coming back in the ring, coming back and training. Mm -hmm. You know, I go to the gym and I feel like I push it, I throw any punches and I feel like I ain't yeah, there. Yeah. And then I sparring, you know, I get punch up from these young boxers, Michael, and you know, punching mm -hmm. them up. And I'm like, okay, cool. Spine with Prince as well, you know, get punches. And as as we get closer, you know, my skills and my, my, my time and things are to come back yeah, in. Yeah, yeah. And there you go, I went to the competition and I mean we had a little it wasn't it was a little challenging in the sense of uh, we had a little ups and downs, but I used that negative energy and put it in the ring and you know. But was the competition <clears throat> up to a standard that you felt that um Okay, because um, people might say, okay, when I cross there after 10 years, um, after since not 10 years, but since 2010, no boxing, and you win all um, this accolade here, you know, maybe the competition wasn't of a high standard. You know, tell me some of the countries, you know, and some of the boxers mm -hmm. you would have faced in order to qualify and win the gold medal. Well, when I got there, we had any draw. The, the most fight I would have gotten, I would have had to win, to win a gold medal was three fights. Mm -hmm. And luckily the coaches pulled a bye for me, so the first fight I was able to miss, I got a bye to the second round, the quarterfinals. And that was the semifinals, and I was able to watch the, in the quarterfinals, watch, um, watch my competitors. I looked at the St. Lucian boxer, um, and then, you know, we have Guyana hometown, so I looked at the St. <coughs> Lucian boxer, he fought, mm -hmm. he fought Barbados, and the two boxers were pretty good. The, mm -hmm. Actually, the guy from St. Lucia, the they announced him as the top welterweight in the region. Okay. He actually been to world championships. He beat boxers from Cameroon and so forth. Mm -hmm. And I looked at him box. I recorded. Mm -hmm. Went back to my room. Okay, I watch at him. I, I look at how he moves. I said, okay, I tell the coach, I said, okay. Mm -hmm. All his punches coming out. Mm -hmm. All I need to do is get him inside straight. Mm -hmm. And so before he come out with his punch, my punch come in and catch him. Mm -hmm. I mean. I don't take anybody for granted. I don't underestimate anybody because you never know. Mm -hmm. So I go in there like, when I go in there, I go in there like I'm, a, I'm going to the Olympics. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter how good you are or how not good, how crappy you are or if yeah, you're not yeah, yeah, of a certain yeah, standard. Yeah. I look at it as I'm going to the Olympics and I'm going to fight the best boxer in the world. Mm -hmm. And that's how I approach my fights and them. It wasn't an easy tournament to see that you could have run over anybody because, mm -hmm. I mean, the box, it was yeah. pun it's punches mm -hmm. fighting and the boxers could, could box, they could compete as well as in the elite mm -hmm. level. Mm -hmm. It's not like you're going and fighting others who don't know how to punch. Yeah, yeah, These are yeah, boxers yeah, have yeah. been to games, yeah. they have been to world championships and I've been off the radar for like mm -hmm. four years. I'm not even on Iba. You could punch in my name in Iba and you can't find nothing on me again mm -hmm. because I've been out for, yeah. for so long. No. Are you prepared for the last hurrah, as they say? Because you, I, I recall the days when you had the battles with Iran Prince, when your Iran Prince had that thing going, and we see some serious bouts between um, you and Prince. Um, uh, coming out of the, out of this tournament, are you, your body, mind, everything? Are you fully prepared to go for this last? you know, this last hurrah, you know, try to get on to the, the, the Olympics? Well, mentally prepared, fully prepared mentally, yes. I mean, there's still a lot of mental work that I'm doing to develop myself as well. Mm -hmm. um, physically, no. Um, technically, tactically, no. Mm -hmm. Not yet, but I mean, we, that's, what we, that's what training is for, that's what training camp is for. Mm -hmm. um, coming back, you know, it's... Uh, what I would say is, okay, what I knew, what I knew, if I, I used to, I just always say, if I know what I knew, if I, what, if I knew then, mm -hmm. what I know now, mm -hmm. like back in 2008, if I knew, if I had known what I know now, mm -hmm. then I think I would have put off, I, I probably would have made it to the Olympics mm -hmm. okay. at a 64 kg. Mm -hmm. um, I'm much more educated, um, my nutrition, I pay a lot more into attention to my, to, how I eat and what I my supplementation because supplementation is important. Mm -hmm. I mean, back then we just used to as boxers we would train, 
it is. Cut out, no, no. Okay. We cut out. <laughs> we actually, to drop weight, you know, dropping weight is a challenge. Yeah. And to drop weight, we would. I feel Nigel could tell me more about that dropping weight. Nigel like himself. But yeah, in yeah. our division, it's like a job test. So we would cut out the rice, the carbohydrates, mm. and just eat meat and salad. And then, I mean, you go in the ring, and most of us used to put out a good first round. Yeah. But then we don't second have round, no energy yeah. after. I remember them days, I remember them days. Yeah, 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 yeah. Come yeah. out your mouth in the second round. Yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. Dragging yeah. on the yeah. canvas and the turn. Yeah, yeah. Your main source of energy is from carbohydrates. I mean, I don't yeah. Because I'm a little more educated now, mm. my nutrition and stuff, supplementation is very important mm. with my protein intake. And then you can um, lend that, that support now to the, to, to the other Well, boxers. that's what I've actually been doing mm. recently. But, um, so where my training and my, my, my nutrition is, comes in, has to play an important part mm. with my um, performance or my, my preparation for the next, um, for the next Olympics. Okay, let me go across to Niger. Nigel, you are the Caribbean heavyweight champion. Super heavyweight. Super yeah. heavyweight champion. That is the bigger, the big man. <laughs> yeah, the right? Big man. Um, you, that's your first major um, tournament, yeah. um, Caribbean tournament. Um, take me through it, tell me how it was for you, you know, how challenging it was, and um, what experience you have, you have you've taken out of that now, because I, I'm sure that you have set your eyes on making a team towards the Olympics. Mm -hmm. And tell me about the stint in Brazil as well. Um, well, the Caribbean Games was it was a, a, a really nice experience for me um, going up against these guys. Uh, I think I fought the fella from the Bahamas. Bahamas. I fought him first. I, I was supposed to fight him before, but um, I went to the World Games, mm -hmm. so that didn't come off. So you know, e even like training for him, you know, preparing, looking at tapes of him and stuff like that. So going into that first fight in Guyana. Um, we already had a game plan, <coughs> like a couple months before. Mm -hmm. So um, to, to pick him apart wasn't that hard mm -hmm. because, you know, um, me and coach really work on how to fight him, what we'll do in the ring, because mm -hmm. um, he's a really good boxer. And I mean, he has some hard punches as well too, mm -hmm. so, you know. So just we, uh, stick to the game plan and the fight was stopping the first round. It's like first round? Yeah, so um, that was the first fight. You know, I went in confident, came off with a win. Um, and then it was the second fight I had to fight the Guyanese. Mm -hmm. I mean, that fight was, that fight was something. I mean, the crowd was like cheering them on, like, freezer, freezer, you know, and had the whole team from China that cheering me on, Nigel, like, it was real. I mean, people lose the voice, everybody was like, mm -hmm. I mean, real, it was real fun. Um, had the team back in me. Um, and, the, well, we sat and we looked at him, um, his fight, his first fight, and according to the coach, he, he was just, he just come out to brawl. He wasn't boxing. Yeah, at all. yeah. So you know, so just had to maintain my distance and you know do the same thing. Pick him apart, and and he feels wrong. You know, I decided to you know give him a little, a little blind. And, and, and one register, and and then I decided you know let's like, just end it right here. Yeah. I hit him like twice, and he couldn't continue, and the crowd was upset. <laughs> so I, you know, I won the fight. I won the goal, and it was a really good experience. I was looking forward to go to Brazil. You know, so I was like pumped up. Yeah, heading yeah, into yeah, Brazil yeah. and what the case was and um, you know the fight in Brazil as well went up against the Brazilian you know same kind of home crowd atmosphere um, when team there started the fight you know started off everything looking nice job coming off nice and somewhere in the fight mm -hmm. uh, according to coach I just I just got lost mm -hmm. um, and I, I, I believe that would, um, actually cost me the fight um, my level of focus in that fight mm -hmm. to me wasn't where it was supposed to be. Okay. I mean, I always set myself, like, set my standard to the coach's standard. Mm -hmm. If you say it wasn't there, that means it wasn't there. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't argue and say, yeah, but coach this and coach that. But, you know, whatever he's saying, I always try and, you know, make that as good as good. Mm -hmm. Whatever the coach says is that. Mm -hmm. And my focus in that fight wasn't there. Because I could have easily be the guy. I mean, he's a shorter guy than me, you know. Yeah, you know, all that yeah. goes, keep him outside and um, kind of drop the ball a little bit. Mm -hmm. But, you know, moving forward, I always um, tell coach, promise to do better. I know how to do better. Every fight, people see me, it should be a different fight, yes. like level-wise. Always moving up mm -hmm. now. Mm -hmm. You understand? So that was my experience in Brazil. I mean, traveling and everything is fun. I enjoy it. I love to represent the country as well, yeah. Trumpet, you were one of the, the, the head coaches um, that was there in Guyana for the overall men's team. Um, 
I think we came back with, with a number of gold medals, you know, in this tournament. Um, it has to be one of our better um, showing um, in any major competition. Mm -hmm. um, from the coach's perspective, tell me a bit about the, 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 the team and some of the, the boxers that you, you saw that really, really have, um, have improved because I know um, Prince and McDonald and all these guys really went out there and also the ladies. Um, but on, a, on, a, on, a, on another show, we're going to talk to, to, to Rhea and some of the girls. But um, tell me about uh, from your, from what you saw, you know, is there development and, and growth in the performance of our boxers presently? Well, we had six gold medals, uh, seven silver and five bronze. And um, yes, development was, was achieved, as you said, over eight years or nine years, we had no tournament like that. So most of the guys were just training that fight, national championships, and then we go into CAC games, stuff like that. And um, getting six gold medals was, was to, on, on my behalf, was, was, was a job well done. You know, we had Nigel, super heavyweight, Hasset, welterweight, Japol, Cooper, junior welterweight, Christian. We had Christian McDonald as a youth and Justin Paris as a junior also and Stephanie, Stephanie Allen, our female. You know, so um, getting the gold, gold medals was, and, and we can see the people who won gold, that they are part of a training system with the national teams. So we can differentiate between the national athletes to those who are training in, in their home gyms. You know? <clears throat> and I guess to, um, with Hassett on the team coming back and you know winning the, the gold medal and the two other awards would have been a motivation for the younger boxers um, on the team? Well, it's not now, but a long time ago, everyone has it is, is gifted as a boxer. So when um, Ford Coleman said, well, Hassett coming back, I texted him one time. I said, so and so, I hear this. Is it true? He said, yes. I said, okay as soon as they're ready. You know, and he came, he was part of the team, as I said, we were up and down, you know, sometimes they get in the groove to know who is so what everybody's job is. And um, what, what, what he showed in the ring that I think everyone should take from him is the ability to listen to his corner. Most men could punch, they can slip and look pretty, but sometimes listen to your corner, listen to the instructions, he's gonna win the, the fight for you. Because he had probably two hardest fights in, 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 the, champ in the championships. And the second fight, he get hit. He got an eight count. I said, as well. When he came in the corner, we said, do this, do this, do this. And he went out totally and do exactly what to do and win easily. You know, so what, what a young guy should also take it, not just that he won and raise his hand and say, yeah, I said, one, no. Look what he did, how he did it, how he listened to the corner. That is what he should take from it. So you were satisfied with the performance of um, the boxers. Who are some of the, the, the young the junior boxers that you, you were impressed with? Well, Christian McDonald and, and Justin Paris, they, one is junior, one is youth, and I think um, they are boxers that we have to look forward to. In the future, we can really step up. As a matter of fact, Christian will be going to Olympic qualifiers. He's now from youth, now he's going over to um, the senior level, and I think he and Probably next Olympic cycle, uh, Justin Paris and there's another guy from Diga Martin, Ronaldo Stewart, great punching potential also. Mm -hmm. You know, so we have some young guys who's coming up. Next generation is in good hands. Well, we need to take a break. When we get back, we want to talk about the road ahead to the Olympics because I know that now um, all eyes are going to be set on making the team um, preparation wise and you know, training comes, so we're going to talk a bit about the road ahead for the Olympics. Viewers, you are looking at Scoreboard here on Accelerator Network. We are talking amateur boxing tonight, and when we come back, we'll continue where we left off.
Welcome back, viewers. Welcome back to Scoreboard on Axe Television Network. Before the break, uh, Trumpet, um, we heard a lot about the performance in Guyana and, and the performance with um, Nigeria in, um, in Brazil. But now is here where the hard work really starts because the preparation for Brazil, you know, where most of us are into the Christmas season painting front step and shopping and you all are in the gym morning and evening. What the road ahead looks like for these guys? The road what, ahead plans is, you, what plans you all have in place? The road ahead is hard because um, our main challenge is, is good sparring. And then, um, what did the for Nigel? He have been selected by Mexico, not Venezuela. Okay. Mexico picked them at the at the at the draft. Okay, so so he'll be going to Mexico <coughs> to, the when, okay, to right. compete. Mm. And when is that? I spoke when? to the manager from Mexico last week, and he said most likely need them in January the twenty second. Okay. So he will get some good sparring in before the Olympic qualifiers. He will get some good matches also before because the team he'll the group he'll be is, is Mexico USA. Mm. Next to where? Morocco and Great Britain. Yeah, so he'll yeah, get some yeah, bouts yeah, that will yeah. make mm. him rise a little higher in the level mm -hmm. and get some good training. How long that stint will be for? That is just six months, four well, months in the four, first. Okay. And if we qualify to the semis, we go So four months next. you'll be on your on, on, on road. Yeah, so that, that, that will do them good in preparation. Mm -hmm. But our, our main training camp, we, so we start coming to that this week. Mm -hmm. It haven't matured as yet, but. Um, this training camp local is, is more for condition work. Mm -hmm. And then we want to go into Cuba, play for six weeks before the qualifiers to get our main sparring and technical work finished mm -hmm. across there. Because in, in local, we do really have that, that amount of quality sparring to give everyone the sparring that they need to really reach that high level. Now, looking back at the performance of these, um, <coughs> these boxers, um, you are satisfied with what you have seen. But the Olympics is still a, 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 um, some distance, you know, away. One of the major issues that we know with amateur boxing is really getting the right camp to put the boxers in to get that type of um, training. I mean, um, Nigeria will be, will be getting that. There's no doubt about it. But the other boxers um, that will be remaining at home, right? You all are, in, you, you all are training twice a day. Uh, um, a week now, right? So it's a plan for day. Right. Now, do you think enough is being done, right? We have quality boxers. We are something, sometimes we are like the national football team. We have a good team, but lack of match. High level match practice. Ma, ma, yeah, hinders us at the, at, the, at the last hurdle. Do you think enough is being done for to get these boxers to a, a, a position where they could be as good as any boxer outside there who they will have to face? Well, I think Cuba will give us that um, level because when you go to Cuba, it's not just Cuba. When you're in Cuba, we have Mexico there, Venezuela, Colombia, China, Japan, mm -hmm. who are different teams mm -hmm. there. So I think if we go to Cuba for about six weeks, we can do well enough with six weeks preparation, especially this parent, mm -hmm. because I say, the other thing is hand pass competition or skipping competition or shadow boxing. Come down to actual combat, man against man. You know, so I think um, the, the trip in Cuba, the, if once you can come off in Cuba, we shall do very well because you'll get different variety of sparring, mm -hmm. different style because you know, different people have different sizes of box. Mm -hmm. The Europeans box different to the Americas, the Africans box different to the Asians. Mm -hmm. So I think if we go to Cuba, that um, we can all expect. No, I like I like to break records, mm -hmm. and um, I don't want to celebrate one. I want to celebrate two boxers mm -hmm. to the Olympics. That's my dream. But do you think at times sparring? But what about actual competition? Because when what you get in sparring, you don't really get when you go into the ring for a bout, right? 
is there uh, any major tournaments or anything? Because you can train and prepare and train and prepare, but match ready. Yes, competition. Right, competition is where it really, uh, you know, it, it tells, you know, you, you, see, you see the faults, you know, the little, little mistakes, mm -hmm. you know, with the boxers. Because when you're sparring, you can only implement and tell them what to do. But in a real situation, then you will see, for instance, when you talk about Hasset, you know, coming to the corner and listening, right? That you might not have seen that in, in a normal sparring, but in, in, in actual action, you know, you, you saw when he, 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 he took the, the advice. So uh, is there any major tournaments that coming up where you will see the boxers in action? Well, as of now, we have um, next year national championships, we have a tournament in Santo Domingo. Mm -hmm. And that's uh, also open to most of the Americas, countries in America. So that, that, that should give us a good, a good um, idea of who is who and what mm -hmm. is what. Because in those tournaments, you have all Latin American countries taking part. And I think if these guys really stick to the plan, I said I'm train hard. Mm -hmm. The harder you train, the harder you can fight. Mm -hmm. And um, sometimes it comes down to just the will to win and want to win. Mm -hmm. You know, because I, when I look at the guys out there, they're different to us. I mean, technically, we are better than some of them. But most of the time, it's, as you say, condition. Yeah. Because we're not accustomed to high-level performance. Mm -hmm. You know, so if you go to that tournament, we can start an eye and say, well, you know, who have a chance? And then again, sometimes, who you think is, is the one to make it is not the one who will make it. Mm -hmm. You know, that's why I say, if you see one boxer from a team, you must say, all of them like that. If you see one man looking good, you should say, yes, everybody looking good because they should each be aiming to reach that high level. Mm -hmm. And if I am here, I should pull him here. Matter of fact, he should try to pass me. And I pass him back. Mm -hmm. And one pull. But um, I think if we go to that tournament in Santo Domingo, that, that should be a good gauge of what to expect. Yeah. So no boxer has qualified for the Olympics as yet? 60 boxers worldwide already did. Well, how many from Trinidad? None uh, from Trinidad. Not, yeah. So, so you we have, have, have six more people to qualify. Hope we get two in that. Right. So when will the boxers know, or um, is there a qualifying uh, mm -hmm. tournament that they have to enter? Yes. The first one for the Americas is in Argentina, Buenos Aires, March 8 to the 20th next year. So there, and there is not much time. There's not much time. And they have a second chance again mm -hmm. in, in Baku mm -hmm. in June. So when you do make it in, so in like March, top five, you yes. have another opportunity. So this only top three in, 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 in Argentina and in Baku is mm -hmm. top five. Are we ahead of where we're supposed to be in preparation? Or are we, as in all other sports, lagging behind, starting late, you know, and playing catch up? We starting late because um, this qualification started since June this championship, the preparation for this qualification. So um, actually this week and last week was, was our easy week then to break back into the, mm. after, Guy, after Guyana was just to break back into the, so. The routine of so training. So we, we, we are still in line. Mm -hmm. Just know, I told the guys, um, don't make me dream bigger than you. Because I have a dream mm. for them. Mm. But I can't dream for them. Oh, I thought when, 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 when mm. you tell me that dream, yeah, yeah, yeah. You can make a worry. I thought I was going to pull a, a, a and try to come back. Here. Yeah, I, mean, uh -huh. I, I, have a, I, I have a dream for the boxer because I, I yeah, see ability. Yeah, yeah. yeah you know, but yeah, they have to yeah, want it yeah, much more than me. Yeah. You know, and once I see they want it, yeah. and that is motivation, I motivate you, yeah. you motivate me. When I see the boxer do great things, I just go home now and try to find something different again to come tomorrow. Mm -hmm. But if you keep on saying one level, yeah. my mind say one level yeah, too. Yeah, you know, so yeah. I think if, if if the guys really really want it, mm -hmm. they they can achieve it. Mm -hmm. I said, you have been around, you know, for a very long time. You have seen it all, you know, done it all. Um, what is your motivation right now? You know, because when we were talking off camera, you said that at least you want to try for one more, one last Olympic. But after all these years and going through the decision, what is your motivation, you know, this time here, this final time, to really see you through and to, you know, to really get it done? Well, George, I mean, for me right now, <laughs> there's a lot of 
mind development, mental development, and ekalash. <laughs> um, poorly whenever you come into my car, mm. it's always the, I always listen to some kind of mind development book, mm. audio book, mm. or something that will I mean strengthen your mind and, and mm. um, build your motivation. And mm. you know, apart from physical fitness, which is one of my biggest um, thing that I have to work, that I'm working on, uh, actually explosive strength and so forth I think 90% of it is <coughs> at least 80% of it is up here mm. the next 20% would come from my person 10% of my fitness and the rest the coach the rest. but for me mm. making it to the Olympics um, is 80% up here um, I, when I sit back and think to myself, the reason why I actually decided is to actually give it up one more try. Um, you know, you ever had goals before that you never, that you wasn't able to, to accomplish? Yeah, I that know. For some strange, some reason you didn't accomplish it. And then, you know, people would say, hey, but he come back in the four, we come back in the ring four. But, who, I mean, who could stop you from uh, trying but to achieve? Like four, I learned for us who want to be the oldest heavyweight, uh, uh -huh. not like that. No, I mean, uh -huh. you, you have a goal that, mm -hmm. that you never, Achieve and it's something yeah, yeah, that you want to achieve when you feel yeah. that you have the chance now to do it. Mm -hmm. And every time, I mean, nothing happens before it's time. Our friend is telling me, Peter, mm -hmm. nothing has happened before it's time. Mm -hmm. And everything played off correctly. I'm here for a purpose. I didn't just come back by guess or decide I want to start back by guess. I mean, everything, situations, circumstances caused me to end up. Because I was just going to go back and train just mm -hmm. to, you know, get my little stress out, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm back. Um, uh, I actually, I mean, it's you have a little situation, uh, as we say, we are adapting to people and so forth. And I've, I uh, have a relationship now with the coach where oh, yeah. we can adapt and we can understand each other. Mm -hmm. And um, when I go into the ring, I go into the ring, I forget all I know. <laughs> I just put everything aside. Of course, I know if I, if this is not working for me, the coach tells me to do something, and it's not working for me, then oh. I, I could, I will adjust. Mm -hmm. However. I'm not going in the ring as I know it all and I'm just yeah, fixing yeah, it. Yeah, I know yeah, I go in the ring yeah, as yeah. Paul and mm. listen to whatever the coach tell me to do and do exactly what the coach tell me to do. If, for some reason, it's not working for me, mm. then, you know, I'll have to adjust. Mm -hmm. I think one of our biggest problems, I, I speak, I not only speak for myself, because, I mean, me having a permanent uh, government job as a military person, mm -hmm. I mean, I have a salary coming in, but, I mean, I, I speak for the other boxers as well where finance is concerned. And, I mean, the coach would have asked a question. We have a little WhatsApp group where boxers, um, where we get all the information. And then sometimes, you know, some of the boxers mightn't come out to train for whatever reason. Mm -hmm. And the coach will ask a question, you know, um, so why boxers not coming out? Or, you know, if he was in Cuba, or if he was in a training camp, why? We would have, we, you know, people would have been there. We are no excuse, but everybody are excused to come and train, uh -huh. you know. And I try, I mean, I try to look at it from both aspects. And one of these guys, one of us, as I should say, challenges is, you know, financial support and so forth. Because, I mean, I, I am very happy. I tell Paul, I'm very happy for him that he able, he able to, you know, get drafted to the WSP where, you know, uh -huh. he gets salary. You get a stipend mm. and so forth, and here at training camp, you know, everything. And you get, you, you get the leave, exposure, you get your opponents. Everything ready. Yeah, yeah, I yeah. Mean, and I feel like I am, I feel like I am, I, I achieve, uh, it, I feel like I am there. Mm. But of course, physical, not, not physically, but yeah, yeah. mentally, mm. you know, and some of the problems our boxers face is, you know, financial. We have to feed ourselves. We our own sup supplementation is very expensive and it is very important. You know, mm -hmm. and we had to buy our own supply, buy our own supplementation, travel, meals. You know, no kind of financial support. And I think the problem, I say, as a country as a whole. I so wait, the, you know, the, you know, the elite athletes in Trinidad and Tobago, they get funded, mm -hmm. right? The elite boxers don't get funded. This is after. This is what have to happen. Because um, uh, to, I think I want to make I want to make an example of this, and, and this is something really in the back of my head. I really want to make an example of this, mm -hmm. and that's why I really going at this, because they wait for you to struggle mm -hmm. and make it. You know, you struggle. The little coach take out his money and buy the supplement for the boxer. That's what uh, like Trump does do. That he just take his money and he don't get a salary. He take his money and 
buy the supplement for the boxer, you know, everything, and you struggle and make it. Oh. And only when you make it, that's when everybody know. Wow, Nigel Paul is the Olympic champion. They want to throw all the money in your back. Oh. But, I mean, where is the support to that road? That road leading to, okay, reaching oh. to the Which Olympic... Which is the roughest. Yeah, that is the toughest. Yeah. Reaching to the Olympic qualifiers. That is the most toughest road you need, and that is where you need all the support. And I speak for athletes on the whole. I don't think we just actually get that. You know, it's only after you go on your... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because you'll be skillful, we, we're we real talented. we we more talented than are. some of the um, athletes out there. That is why we are able to win a medal, probably even a bronze medal at the CSC Games. Because we have that, we're naturally talented. Uh -huh, uh -huh. And the extra support, if we was getting extra support, I think we would have a lot more, a lot more um, results uh -huh. than we need. I mean, and again, too, <coughs> it's not only the support, but the athletes themselves, they have to have that mindset and they have to know what they want. What they want, especially the boxers, they have to know what they want and what they want, what their dreams are, and really come out and sacrifice. Mm -hmm. But I mean, sometimes I think that is one of the factors that is true boxers off and true, you know, discourage people. Yeah, I yeah, mean, that yeah, was one of yeah. my, that was one of the reasons I stopped box too. Mm -hmm. I mean, apart from my motivation, you know, they said that one person is here that push, mm -hmm. that push, that drive, could I get me to come out and train? I will run, I will run, I will train every day for. I do train, train, train. And that was the Cuban coach, Vicente Martinez. Then uh -huh. he left, and he left. I mean, I do have that, ent that extrinsic drive again. And then, you know, we're not getting no support from no financial support. And uh -huh. all these different things. Uh -huh. I say, you know what? I started doing some money, making extra money, and that's where my money has come from. And uh -huh. for Caribbean games, just before we left, I spent $2,000 on supplements. I had to buy my protein, 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 which we. Uh, we actually the, the, we, we help the boxers get some of it and so forth. Uh -huh. um, I had to use my protein, my multivitamins, my uh, energy, everything. I, I spent over two thousand of my money to help my performance, and that was I mean that would give me a little competitive edge uh -huh. um, in the competition. People want people when I came back to the competition, people boxers were like, "Hey boy, this man come back, you know, miss you." Actually, the Barbados and the Miss Cathy, the Cathy Hapa. Hapa, she said, you should be getting a pension in boxing now. <laughs> yeah, she told me, she said, you're getting a pension in boxing Well, to be honest, when I first um, saw <laughs> on the, <coughs> the, the, the list, uh, mm -hmm. even has said, I said, has said, come back, we come back to the boy. <laughs> but I mean, uh, I had to eat my words. Nigel, yeah. where people busy seeing about the Christmas <coughs> and everything, your mind is on um, Brazil? Back to Brazil? Is, is Mexico. 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 Right? You'll be leaving home for the next four to six months. That's, you know, once you, 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 you make it through. Mm -hmm. um, preparation wise, um, physically, mentally, you know, where you are um, right now. And as I spoke with uh, Aaron, um, asked him what is motivating him. You know, he had a long history, but you relatively new in boxing, mm -hmm. right? How, I, how, how do you keep yourself motivated now and prepared for, for, the, for this long journey ahead? Well, to motivate myself in the sport of boxing, well, I consider myself the jealous type now. Mm -hmm. Like how Aaron and, and the rest of the guys went and get a host of that trophy. You could ask them, I was like, boy, I want to wear them trophies. <laughs> you know? So I was trying to stay jealous. Mm -hmm. I mean, to achieve more. Yeah, to give you that. that yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah so I'm seeing them guys with the trophy, I was like, yeah, I want to wanna. I know I, got, I have no gold medal, but I was still like, well, I went to that big trophy, I think I home, right? Yeah, so, you know, even looking at other athletes, like in history, I think that people winning Olympic gold and Olympic like medals and stuff, I I really want one. Mm -hmm. Like, like honestly, I want, yeah. that, that might try that. Yeah, yeah, I yeah. want it. And um, <coughs> my fitness level, according to coach, is now where it should be right now. Because, as you said, in Mexico it's like a high climate. Mm -hmm. So we have um, right now we're working like real hard on me running, 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 working on our fitness mm -hmm. to get up to a certain standard. So when I go across the train, you know, at least I'll be able to recuperate faster mm -hmm. because of the altitude and stuff. And like this morning we started hills, in training, incorporating hills, more hills will be incorporated in training. <laughs> I'm not looking forward to it, but you know you have to do it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Um, you know, so we preparing real hard every day. Coaches text me, let me know what's going on after the training, before the training, how I do, what he expect. You know, and um, I try my best to. I wouldn't say please the coach, but you know, he know what is best 
for me to perform my, at my best. Mm -hmm. You understand? So I try, my, I try, I try my best to always do what the coach want me to do. I mean, certain times he let me know. I mean, he he always tell me, "You go hit my boy, go love me." Mm -hmm. <laughs> I mean, sometimes I be like, "Oh God, Trump." <laughs> You know, yeah, yeah, but he, yeah. he's be like Nigeria, you know, working hard enough. You have to push yourself, take, yeah. take, take, you know. And I'm, some of them I know are pushing in there, but I know I could push more. And he'll mm. always let me know that little bit you're saving, yeah. push it out, mm -hmm. all the way out. And you go, you go increase, mm -hmm. the fitness go increase, you know. So working real hard, um, my mental is there, trust me. And I'm um, just looking forward to going out there and making a mark. When you go to Mexico, you'll be on the <laughs> A different coach, right? mm -hmm. or, or basically, basically, yeah. right? <clears throat> you will you will have to adapt to that coaching style, mm -hmm. right? Do you think it will be difficult for you, on the having been on the trumpet for for, 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 for months now, mm -hmm. going to be under a different coach? You know, he might want you to, uh, you know, do things slightly mm -hmm. different. Are you prepared to make that sort of adjustment and then when you get back here, mm -hmm. fall back in line on the... Um, because every coach will coach his boxer to have a, a, a certain style, style yeah. right? Well, one thing I respect about um, my coach is that if there's another coach willing to have an input, mm -hmm. he himself always want to learn more. Um, even when we went to the World Game and we was with um, Coach Norman, he was just there. He was just back. Mm -hmm. And I, I could actually tell that he was like taking mental notes yeah. and just letting Coach Norman do, do his thing with me. I mean, working okay. on my stance, working on my jab as a big guy because he has to work with super heavyweights. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, being under that, I learned to kind of adapt. I mean, it's take a while to, to switch his style, mm -hmm. if you understand what I'm saying. But yeah, yeah. Coach always allow me mm -hmm. to work with other coaches. Yeah. Even like just to, cause like working with a super heavyweight, I mean, he, he's always said he don't know everything. He mm -hmm. willing to learn mm -hmm. as well. So, you know, even going out there and working with other people, mm -hmm. I have like the know how to tweak it when I need to, when, when stuff need to be tweaked. And um, working with other coaches shouldn't be that hard. I could adjust, adapt quickly, I think. Mm -hmm. So it shouldn't really be a major problem. Well, we need to take another break when we come back. Uh, Trumpet, I want to talk to you. I want to discuss, you know, what can the boxing supporters um, in Trinidad look forward to in 2016? Because, you know, um, sometimes in amateur boxing, there's always the ups and downs and, mm -hmm. you know, the little struggle here. But um, we are seeing change coming into, into the amateur boxing, and we hope that that change is really will benefit and will be the betterment for, for the boxers. So we'll, you could ponder on that, and when we come back, you'll answer the question. Viewers, this is Scoreboard here on Axel Network. We're talking amateur boxing. We're going to take a break, and when we return, we're going to continue our discussion. Stay tuned. Tune into Football 101 every Tuesday night at 9.30 p.m. and catch the repeats every Wednesday and every Thursday at 5.30 p.m. Football 101 brings to you an in-depth analysis of the matches, player profiles, and news on and off the field. We highlight the English Premier League, La Liga, Serie A, the Bundesliga, the Champions League, and all major football tournaments worldwide, right here on Axe Television Network. I'm Joshua DeMatos. And I'm Andres Soclau, and this is Football 101, bringing the field to your home. Welcome back, welcome back to Scoreboard on Acts 25. Trumpet, you basically knew as a, as, a, as a national coach, right, on the scene. I remember when we will come and cover boxing, you know, ever so often we will talk about boxing, we will talk about where boxing going, you know, certain things need to change, you know, and the performance of, of the boxers. 
now that you have been appointed a national coach and we are seeing success, you know, in areas, when you look back, in what areas have you seen growth? And are you satisfied with where we are presently with amateur boxing training and Tobago? I'll answer the second question first. Um, I'm not satisfied right now where we, where we are because um, we should have been at a much higher level. You know, um, having held the Olympic qualifiers in Trinidad and Tobago and no one qualified to me, that was a failure. Mm -hmm. I mean, we should have done something somehow to get someone to qualify to the Olympics. And um, the partner with development, now every coach have their style of training. And look, looking back in the past, we had pretty good coaches who had some great success also. And um, when I was appointed on the team, I was not the man in charge. I was still working under someone. And now that the program is being done by me and following my program, I'm trying to input my way then how to do things. And um, I'm seeing good results. You know, um, as I said, as long as the boxers dream it, we can do it. And um, the main thing I'm stressing is this. Most of the times, we go out after the first round, we're done. One good first round, everybody clapping. That, well that, 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 that has been happening for years. Eh? <laughs> first round, great fight first round. Second and third round, we go. And I've heard it before. Them training boxers could box, but only one round. You know, and even in the training process, what, what I do every day is always finish the round strong, no matter what. If you're tired, give it your all. And the next thing I put in the mind is this. Always, even with shadow boxing, shadows if you're going to fight. Beating the bag as a fight, and you want to impress the judges that you're ahead. You know, feeling yourself that you're winning the fight. And, and, and the, the simple things become, I mean, boxing is boxing. Jab, right hand, left hook, upper cut. But that know-how, how to win, that's very important. Mm -hmm. And if you just keep on just straight, yes, a beta bag, okay, beta bag. Shadow box, no. Shadow box, visualize. You know, see someone there actually punching and punch that person and make him miss, win that round. You know, so even the shadow boxing is a competition. Punching bag, it's a competition always going harder and harder and harder because that's how the fight is going to be because these guys who are getting paid on the national team living as elite athletes full-time athletes getting paid on the national team that's all they do you know and if we had to step up to the plate we had a thing like that we cannot just say okay just go and when you're tired just a one punch you know you're tired yes of course i, I know but i've been tired but when you're tired it's still like a fight hard and just that little edge you know could take you over from from losing nine, ten nine to winning ten nine, because that's what they want to see that that fight mm -hmm. in the boxing. It's, it's simple thing. I just change little things that I see that I, I can change. The boxing, all of us have good skills. Yes, all the coaches have good skills, but you know, just my methodology that I'm just using to try and effect some some changes. Mm -hmm. um, I was asked this question a couple of weeks back um, during the course of the um, the, the championship. Um, what was the reason we didn't see Michael Alexander on the national team? Well, since June, May, for a long while, most of the year, Michael has not been really training as he should. Okay. And um, even before we went to Venezuela, to the championships there, he probably trained 10 times out of 110 times. 100 plus sessions, he trained 10 sessions. We still gave him a chance because the few times they came to the gym, I said, you know what? It's in him still if he get a good job he can do. But when he went there after one run again, he failed. And um, all now, every day we go, we had to sign my book. So I know you had to sign AM, PM. And if you check Michael, since August, probably train 10 times too. Now, having talent is good. I say anyone have talent, everybody's talented. But you have to have that, that commitment, that passion. But isn't that 
he's got me motivated in some way because, you know, as Iran was saying, um, <coughs> he's fortunate to have a job. And he is, before you go on, he is fortunate mm. that he is our only boxer who received over 20,000 or something government this year. Okay, well then. Um, he is the only boxer yeah. received twice 90,000 mm. one time and 180,000 another time. So he should have all the motivation. But could he be could we held accountable for receiving the money and not training or not being Well, as I say, that, that money. As, because as, that as, money could have what, gone to what, the, to what the I other read, boxers. What who, I read on, on, on the format we signed, yeah. the money is for preparation for tournaments, mm -hmm. not for your personal life. Yeah, but, yeah, but, you know, so but, if, but he if, has if, not been preparing for tournaments. Right, so then all they do, I don't know if they do as yet, but they might cut it because if he's not in the ranking as he was, mm. he was number 15 in the world, now he's not, he's not but training. But with, with, with his attitude and what he's doing, would, would that hinder the other boxers who might be in line? No, that, that won't hinder them, it to, hinder him. No, no, to, for, for, to get funding. No, it should not. Okay. Because okay. it's an individual thing, okay. me and you and go myself. But Michael is just, I talk to Michael all how, Mr. Cox talk to Michael all how, and he will come today. He missed him for three days. He'll come back next week. Missed him for two weeks. And so it's all in his mind, I don't know. He recommended to take him to the cycle, this was really bothering with him. But I, I personally, to me, I, I think it's just the wrong company. Like I tell him, I said, when I used to box, my friend was a boxer. So when I say, hey, you ain't gonna train? Or he called me and said, nah. He said, no, you had to go and train. He, not to go and lie, to go and train. Mm -hmm. When I was doing kickboxing, my friends were kickboxers. So when I, when I, if I miss gym one day, the next night, four or five men pulling up, trumpet, we ain't seeing gym today. That's the kind of friends they want. Mm -hmm. They don't mm -hmm. want friends when they ain't see you one day, they come in, hey, we're talking about feeling sick, but we're gonna lie on the avenue, boy. That's the friend you want. Yes, you have time for that. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, but if I am an elite athlete and getting that kind of support, yeah, yeah. it's now I train hard. Mm -hmm. You know, so I think I talked to him, so I think by now he should start to get back his focus and motivation because Olympic is close mm -hmm. and he have, he is very talented. Okay. Yeah. Nigel, um, we, don't, we don't have much time before we enter the, um, tonight's program, but um, <clears throat> Looking back at your short career in boxing, because you, you, I think, the, how many, two years? Um, nine months. Nine months. Nine months? <laughs> okay, nine months, and you have, you are now the Caribbean champion. Mm -hmm. um, you have traveled extensively. Um, what is your goal? What goal do you have set, you know, for yourself now as 2015 comes to an end and we look forward to 2016. My goal is actually to qualify for the Olympics mm -hmm. and to become the first boxer in Trinidad to win an Olympic medal. Mm -hmm. That's my goal. Mm -hmm. for, if for some reason I don't win our gold medal in the Olympics. Yeah, yeah I said laughing, you know. I, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I want a trophy here. Yeah. <laughs> if I don't win our gold medal, at yeah. least. Um, as far as I understand, we qualify boxers for the Olympics, but no one actually when I fight mm -hmm. in an Olympic event. Mm -hmm. So short term, when I Olympic fight, long term, Olympic goal. Mm -hmm. I mean, I have some time because mm -hmm. fairly new to the sport and this level of competing. Yeah, and yeah. So you have, a, you have a couple of years. Uh, yeah, yeah. So I mean, if I could do all this in nine months, mm -hmm. it give me like a couple of years. Yeah, you should be able to. Yeah. I said, you know, um, being one of the more experienced um, older boxers, I mean, not, not age-wise, but, you know, in this, in this sport, you heard from Trumpet about um, Michael Alexander, right? One of Trinidad Tobago, to me, you know, because remember when we started covering boxing, mm -hmm. I mean, um, Michael was a baby, just barely mm -hmm. ma making the, the, the rope, the height of the rope. And he has achieved a lot, mm. right? But it appears that he is falling away for some reason. If you get the opportunity to, to, to talk to, 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 to Michael, you know. Um, 
Earlier on, yeah, you heard I'm here, yeah. I think you heard me mention yeah, three minutes, yeah. that the boxers, yeah. the boxers, they have to know what they want. Yeah. And getting the opportunity to talk to Michael, I have done it already. Okay. I've seen what's going on and I've spoken to him. Mm. And I mean, it's up to him now. He yeah, has to yeah, know what yeah, to do. Yeah. I can't I can run his route. For. I have mm. my own route to pave. Yeah. You know, yeah, my own yeah. route yeah. to pave. Um, as as laughing at, yeah, uh, as, <laughs> as Paul said that mm. his goal is to be one of the first boxers to actually win yeah, a yeah. medal. Uh, we always say we're going to win gold. Mm. I stop saying that. Mm. I don't say I'm going to win gold because then if you don't, when, when you don't want to, there's that pressure to be on you. You mm. need to go. My aim is to go there and perform at my best. And yeah. My best must be at the top level. And if my best. As long as I have all the proper things in, 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 in line, mm. training, nutrition, everything, then I'll go and put them up, perform my best. And if my best is getting me to Olympic gold medal, then that is my best because my best will make me just as good as the boxer. <coughs> mm -hmm. So the only thing which separate me from, from and the other boxer is one of us has to be technically better and tactically better. And that's basically it. It's all about my, as I said, just mind development, keep developing the mind. I think the mind have a lot of people, whether the mind can conceive and they believe, the mind can achieve. And it's just, I, right now my biggest focus is just mindset development, mind development, mind development. Um, everything has a play, a play in part. Well, part. Gentlemen, we have come to the end of uh, another edition here on Axe Steps and Network. And I know that this will be the last time I might be seeing you all before the the, the Christmas, mm -hmm. right? And I know that you all will be, be, yeah, no will be busy in the thing, but I still will give each of you all uh, 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 two seconds to, you know, send some greetings out to, you know, friends and family. Me first? Yeah. Well, I just want to say I'm to Trinidad Tobago from, on behalf of the Boxer Association, to have um, a joyous and a peaceful December and Happy New Year. Well, I just want to wish everyone a Merry Christmas, Happy New Year, um, be safe for the Christmas season. Um, on, behalf of, <laughs> on behalf of Trent Tobago Amateur Boxing team, I um, just want to wish everyone in Trent Tobago a wonderful season uh, and a bright and prosperous 2016 set goals and go forward to it. Well, you heard it from each of the boxers and their coaches, and uh, Aaron, it's a pleasure to Likewise. see you that great um comeback <laughs> um we really appreciate you all um spending this time with us i'm going to wish you all the best and um we're really you know hoping that you know everything goes as planned and uh, at least you know we see two or more boxers qualify for the olympics but um as aaron said even if we don't qualify for the olympics once we do our best and we make the country proud i think that um that will be a reward by itself. You know, so again, viewers, we want to thank you for spending this time with us. Remember, scoreboard is on every Tuesday night at 8 p.m. And if you miss us um, tonight, you can catch us on Wednesday at midday, 12 p.m. So until next week, be safe, have an enjoyable week ahead, and stay blessed.